move on to the director's report? Certainly. Well, first, I want to join you all in welcoming Commissioner Barranco on her appointment to the commission. Uh, as you know, she was appointed by the city council at their last meeting on July 17th to fill the vacancy that was created by Commissioner Germain's retirement. Uh, we spent a little quality time this morning, and I gave her the big stack of books that you all got when you were started on the commission, and she's read them all, she tells me by now. So <laughs> she's an expert just like the rest of you. Um, I'd also like to remind you that uh, due to Paul's retirement, he was one of your three uh, representatives on the General Plan Steering Committee, <coughs> along with Commissioners Jeffrey and Donaldson. So you will need to nominate uh, one of your fellows to uh, fill that third seat on the steering committee, and then that would, appointment would be made by the city council. Um, I would recommend that you think about that for a few minutes. I did remind you about it last month. Um, and uh, if you wish, you could do that nomination when I get to the end of my director's report. Does that work for you? That works. Okay. Or unless you want to wait until Commissioner Martin arrives. Would you rather wait till Chair Martin arrives? Um, why don't you? Oh, we'll see if he gets here. Okay. He might be walking in. Right okay. There. Uh, the City Council has met uh, just once since your last meeting because they take a recess in the first part of July. So that meeting was on July 17th. And at that meeting, they had a study session um, on the Big Four traffic study, which is the same presentation you had at your last meeting. However, due to time constraints, they didn't have an opportunity for discussion. So they have scheduled a special meeting on Saturday, September 15th for uh, just to devote to the Big Four traffic study and a discussion of that. I don't have the time of that meeting yet, but uh, we will tell you um, next time. The Redevelopment Agency had a presentation on the vision for the East Bay Bridge Center, which is the same presentation that you'll be seeing in a few minutes. The City Council considered a contract for an al the alternative transportation study that was mentioned during the Big Four presentation. Um, and they referred that to the Transportation Committee for further review. That contract is expected to be considered again by the Council at their next meeting on August 7th. They approved contract amendments with MIG and Diet and Batia for the general plan update uh, concerning the expanded alternatives analysis and preferred plan process that we're going through right now. They also granted a noise waiver uh, for Borders Books for tearing off the roof uh, they're re-roofing at borders and the tear-off work has to be done when the store is closed, so they were approved for eight nights of night work. Um, and finally, the council heard an informational report about the permit parking program and they approved a uh, permanent permit parking area on the north side of 62nd Street between <coughs> Hollis and Overland. The General Plan Update Steering Committee had a bus tour uh, of the city, of the so-called change areas of the city, this past Saturday, July 21st. And then their last meeting was this past Tuesday, the 24th, where they began walking through the change areas one by one and debating the future land uses and building forms uh, of each change area for development of a preferred plan. Um, however, uh, the committee needs to get all the way through area L, A through L, and they only got through B at their meeting on Tuesday. So needless to say, they have a lot more work to do through the rest of the summer. And um, in addition to, to discussing transportation policies. And after they have developed a preferred plan, we will then schedule a joint meeting with the Planning Commission and City Council to review that plan. The Park Avenue District Advisory Committee is scheduled to have their next quarterly meeting on Wednesday, August 8th. And at that meeting, they'll be reviewing the status of private projects and public improvements in the district and also the status of the implementing ordinances. I would like to announce that there are three vacancies on the Park Avenue Committee. Um, and those vacancies are two resident seats and one business seat. We do have an applicant for the resident seat, and that appointment is expected to be made by the council at their next meeting on August 7th. But we need still need two more, a business representative and a resident. And I would note that you don't need to live within the Park Avenue district in order to be a resident on the committee, although it would be helpful for the business representative to be close to or within the district. Um, so anyone who's interested in applying for one of those seats on the Park Avenue District Committee can download the 
committee application form from the city website and submit it to the city clerk. And finally, um, I want to report back to you on an item that was brought up at your last meeting. Commissioner Jeffrey asked for a status report on the study of impact fees of adjacent jurisdictions. Uh, a firm, a private firm called Muni Financial was hired by the city to prepare a development uh, impact fee study last year and they've come up with recommendations for two fees, a parks and recreation facilities fee and a general government facilities fee. This was presented to the City Council on May 1st, and the Finance Director was then directed to meet with the development community and the business community to go over these proposed fees. As a result of that meeting, Muni Financial has now been directed to prepare a comprehensive study of all of the various development impact fees of seven other nearby East Bay cities. And that study is expected to be completed by October. In addition, the developers have been given until November to have their own consultants review the city's proposed fees. So it probably won't be no, until November or later that a revised impact fee proposal will be brought back to the city council. Uh, but the short answer to your question is that yes, we are doing a, a comprehensive study of the various impact fees of seven adjacent East Bay cities and that study is expected to be completed by October. Thanks, Charlie, that's very good news. Sure. So um, that concludes my report, and unless you have any questions, I would suggest that you go back to considering your nominee to fill Commissioner Germain's seat on the General Plan Steering Committee.